Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Alps Conference 2022. We are going to discuss uh, ayahuasca and its effect with a great researcher that is Elena Heischer. How are you? Hi, thanks for the introduction. I'm uh, doing very nice. Good, and Good I'm conference. not alone to do that. I'm with you, Ben. How are you, Ben? Yeah, great. We're just out of the session and looking forward for some more questions. Yes, so Elena uh, is from the University of Zurich and uh, has talked about ayahuasca at the conference. A great, great talk. We really appreciate it. Can you tell a bit more about yourself? What's your background? Okay, about my background. So I... Um, I'm a trained psychologist. I studied at the University of Zurich, um, where, as uh, you already asked me, I did my master's then with Franz Vollenweider um, on uh, LSD and uh, primary process cognition, but also on meditation and psilocybin. Uh, I was originally more interested in, in uh, clinical work, uh, therapeutic work, but once I found out that uh, in research I can also <laughs> like work on the things that originally brought me to study psychology, then uh, yeah, I was very happy about that. Um, yeah, like maybe some other background. Uh, I love the mountains. <laughs> I love singing and dancing. Um, yeah, and the ocean. So I think uh, I have a very like normal life living in Zurich, also with my daughter. Um, yeah, and. Um, after my master's, I continued uh, uh, with a PhD that I'm about to finish. Um, on first, uh, interested in ayahuasca, but uh, we're more working now on ayahuasca analogs, and um, I'm still interested in bridging uh, this also with clinical work, so also working with patients. Very, very good. So something I like about this conference, and I, I like that you said it is. I think there's a, a big focus on it being more than just your work, like putting things in context. And I liked in your introduction that you, you say, you know, what you like to do. And I, but it shows the spirit of this place here, right? We, we're trying to look at what we do in, in context, not only, you know, you're not only a researcher. Uh, and I think this, we can feel this all across the, the, the talks. And even in your presentation, it was pretty clear, right? Trying to also put a bit more context. You, you said it in the talks, mm -hmm. right? it's just only numbers. And it maybe it's obvious to, to you and many people here, but it's not that obvious when you look around in other, uh, of, uh, other conferences of this type, right? What do you think? Right? Yes, I totally believe. One question I had on for you was why ayahuasca and not another mainstream psychedelic? We hear a lot about LSD, MDMA, and other things like this, psilocybin. Why did you choose ayahuasca? Uh, one thing is, um, I think, uh, you when you look back, you always find a storyline, a red line. I think there's also randomness in it, <laughs> where how your way goes. Um, I'm generally interested, um, like I, I'm a very curious person, so in terms of uh, um, research, I also put another hat on, so I'm much more critical, I want to understand. Um, um, I'm not only interested in ayahuasca, I find it particularly interesting because of the whole whole all the cultural um, aspect that flows into it for example there's this ayahuasca conference and you really also experience the conflict that this causes and i find conflict very interesting because uh, there are um, different perspectives so ayahuasca comes with a whole um, of course, you ha have that also with other psychedelics such as psilocybin, but uh, there's something particularly interesting about the whole um, yeah, ethnographic or um, anthropological um, context of ayahuasca that's particularly interesting, but I'm not only interested in that. I mean, I also uh, like uh, um, to um, ask questions about other things, and not necessarily about psychedelics, but psychedelics are particularly interesting because of their uh, capacity to change uh, our perception of ourselves and the world. And one uh, question I had, uh, uh, and I'm sure our listeners have, is about, uh, you said, ayahuasca analog or fa pharma ayahuasca. Can you explain the difference and why we are speaking about this? Yeah, that's, I mean, terminology, and I think we have to be careful about that. Um, it's also coming with a lot of dilemma, as I talk, um, uh, said in the talk. Ayahuasca analog 
uh, is a very pharmacologically oriented term. Okay. Analog in a sense of we are working with the same molecules or um, at least part of the molecules that are in ayahuasca, but it's very much from a uh, pharmacological perspective. Um, in the traditional, uh, like in the indigenous uh, um, tribes, it's not so. <laughs> it's not about the molecules. About it's about the plant spirit. It's about the shaman. Uh, it's about the healing. So from their perspective, it's certainly not an analog. Um, so maybe for a Western pharmacologically oriented mind, we could say ayahuasca analogs are maybe the plant-based. Um, um, analogs in terms of pharmacological properties and the pharmawaska would then maybe be the synthesized uh, um, versions of it but we are aware that this is a very narrow perspective mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. also had other words for the for the compounds that we're working with uh, i think we still stick to the ayahuasca analogs also to um, like appreciate the inspiration where it comes from mm -hmm. But there's also this uh, potential for uh, cultural appropriation or mm. uh, many dilemmas that we are facing. Pharma is a really cool name. D did you come up with it or was no. it, is it uh, no. already used in... Uh, yes, yes, that's <laughs> I think it captures used. it super well, yes. uh, that dilemma you said. in, in a Yeah, it captures that dilemma, exactly. So I don't like the word, but it captures <laughs> 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 Because th the dilemma comes that ayahuasca is a plant that is uh, um, um, crea enfin, not created, but made. the mix is made by different people. So you, in order to make the studies, you have to have cert uh, the same compound for everybody. Is that correct? That's where it comes from, or I'm uh, mistaken? Um, yeah, it's about um, uh, like in the Western medical context, we want to standardize. We don't want too much variation. We want also to have safety. I mean, the vomiting um, in the ayahuasca cultures often is part of the thing. In some cultures, even without vomiting, it's not ayahuasca. In our medical system, <laughs> we want to avoid the vomiting if possible. Um, one uh, thing that I would like to mention here is that we don't only have this conflict between the Western world and the indigenous tribe, but if you go there and uh, talk with the people of different tribes and different regions, they amongst each other have uh, conflicts. Mm. And um, maybe that's also because of the Western influence that they start to talk, our ayahuasca is the real ayahuasca and mm. the, the indigenous tribes uh, just at the other side of the river they work with not the original so this is a conflict and then even increased with the churches uh, a huge huge tensions when you go there so it's not only between westerners and indigenous but of course um maybe more pronounced and also like the wording ayahuasca is not the word that many uh, tribes use mm -hmm. can you explain more the churches it's true that in all the psychedelics uh, uh, explained we hear uh, rarely this term used so can you explain what it is uh, in in uh, the ay ayahuasca uh, world the church yeah so there um, we know that for example in brazil uh, there was the influence of the christian church yes uh, and um, in the 1930 um, they kind of met so there were different maestro Irineo, or I don't know which one the one was the original, so I'm not too much into it, but there were people that um, uh, got to know ayahuasca, and as it's happening often in these regions, uh, there's a mixture from the original traditions with the with a Christian church, ah, okay. so they have these, they have um, put that kind of together, and they uh, now. Uh, since these 1930s and increasingly uh, since the 1980s it's, it's also spreading all over the world um, they have um, ceremonies like mm -hmm. church uh, service ceremonies where they drink ayahuasca and mm, in some cases they also smoke Santa Maria which is cannabis and they sing it's a very often very rigid structure they sing their songs uh, like they have different ceremonies and for each ceremony different songs um, and it's very structured and depending on the type of ceremony it's uh, sitting or standing or they have a certain type of dance so they include it in a very structured church okay. service so ceremony. thanks I learned, I learned <laughs> what it is so um, 
That's great. So we see uh, uh, ayahuasca uh, last year. I was uh, at the conference and we I heard uh, only few studies about ayahuasca. They were saying the reason was uh, that uh, uh, well they needed to to uh, have the pharma ayahuasca in order to do the the studies. So is it something new that we're seeing those new studies or they've been existing uh, and in and um, that's my question. There are studies on ayahuasca from very different angles, uh, like anthropology, ethnography, um, also clinical studies, often observational, or also uh, like um, done with the churches or with the centers. So there's an like a body of evidence on ayahuasca. Um, I think the ayahuasca analogs. There are <laughs> also reports uh, from like 30 years ago, okay. but uh, it's maybe less prominent. Okay, okay. So but it's for example, Jordi Riba in Spain did a lot of uh, important research on ayahuasca. Okay, good. Uh, so any uh, key takeaway from the study you showed us uh, at, the, the, at the conference? And I can say to everybody, you should check it out because we're going to post it on the podcast as well. So you will be, he be able to hear all the conference, but any key takeaways from the study? Um... From which one? Of the the one you presented on ayahuasca mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I think a key takeaway is um, ayahuasca seems to have influences on the way we relate to ourselves and to others and to the world. I think it's highly dependent on the context. Uh, what we see with the data, we have some acute um, and post-acute effects. Uh, we also have some lasting effects, um, but it's not a magic pill, and. Um, we have to be aware of the risks uh, and provide or uh, also think about providing or safe containers um, also in the Western world that are appropriate for the context that we work. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think for me one aspect when you talk about the church and, and the differences and one that is pretty striking is the setup, right? And I think you showed pictures of you know, what would happen if you were to take it in, in the south or, or, or what happened in Zurich. Uh, how, how big uh, of an impact do you think that has uh, ev eventually at the end of the experience? Is that, you know, uh, really a, a factor that we needs to be studied or maybe it's not that important overall? The setting? Yes. When uh, it is important for sure. I would not... Um, find myself in a pot position to like judge which setting is the best, but uh, some sort of structure and the safety and support is certainly necessary. I think um, like people um, benefit from the church setting as far as our data show, but I don't necessarily say that this is necessary. So I think um, some key points like safety, uh, support, uh, proper sc uh, screening also, and what mm. do I do with it in everyday life? So to have this kind of container, yes, that's important. Those are the key elements. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where can we find uh, more information on your work? You can find it on the uh, team website um, uh, at the university hospital uh, psychiatric university hospital in Zurich um, with the team of Milan Scheidecker. I think there you find quite a bit of our work and uh, you can also find the contact there if you have further questions. No problem. We will put the link in the show notes so no problem. People can find more information and ask you directly if they have any questions. Nonetheless, a big, big thank you for this wonderful talk. And I encourage everybody to go and check it out because it was amazing. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you uh, very much uh, for this. And see Thanks you next time. Thanks for having me, for the invitation, for providing uh, the space. Thank you. And for all of those listening, well, you know, we're at the Apps Conference 2022, where we speak about psychedelic awareness. So don't hesitate to reshare this podcast if you like it or to like it on Spotify or anywhere else where you listen to it. Thank you very much and see you next time.